Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about the comic book industry. Again? Again. Okay, and somebody's got to. Somebody's got to. Yeah, not a lot of people are talking about the comic book industry in a positive manner these days because it's not doing very well. We're not going to either, apparently. <laughs> we're, we're not going to either. Uh, we're going we're gonna to point out the obvious that people want comic books. They do. They want comic books. They just don't want what the mainstream comic book industry is offering them. Yes. Uh, so this is really interesting to, to watch the excuses start to fly uh, as to why people aren't buying comics. I just read your, your little subtext of the picture here. Superman is sad because nobody wants to buy his comic books anymore. <laughs> he is sad. So he's got to rest his head in the bosom of Wonder Woman. I mean, who uh, wouldn't want the rest of her head in the bosom of Wonder Woman? I wouldn't because I'm happily married. I would, but I like Diana, not in that way. Okay. More like a, you know, I just want to be hugging Wonder Woman because I'm like, my hero. Anyway, continue. Anyway, you anyway. look on your face, continue. Anyway, we're going to talk about that and how maybe, possibly, maybe, comic book industry professionals and comic book publishers, I, I should say the publishers, the people who own the company, are, are starting to pivot away from Twitter, possibly, because uh, there's definitely something going on. And we'll talk about some rumors that are flying around about, uh, you know, some of the websites now not getting access to comics like they used to. Uh, some people are getting gone from the industry. And I think it's do or die. I mean, this is, kind of follows up what Eric Larson was saying the other day. And, you know, again, it's come from Eric Larson, who's kind of been against any, any naysayers in the comic book industry, but he basically said, you know, Marvel and DC, uh, people working, still working for those companies are getting threats from the top that they better start to perform or they're done. I'm surprised it took this long, uh, frankly. I don't know. Uh, pandemic was a good excuse. Well, to, before to that, it, they were they were needing to be telling people to bring it, bring it or, you know, say bye. And they didn't. Well, I think, and this is what we're going to talk about. I think there were, were excuses that were fed to people at the top that were like, oh, kids don't like comics. Nobody wants to buy comic books anymore. Well, we know Disney knows that's bullshit. Yeah. Disney specifically. And and uh, and these executives, they believe that. They're like, oh, well, I guess it's just, you know, we're still doing okay. Nobody wants to buy comics, whatever. It's a legacy business. We need them to, you know, come up with movie ideas or whatever. But we're finding out that a lot of the, the movies that are being greenlit, a lot of the TV shows are not using the comic book ideas. And we're finding out, yes, that manga and crowdfunding are blowing up. They blew up during the pandemic. And what did not blow up was sales of Marvel and DC Comics. But real quick, if you go out to Amazon, hey, if you go to this article and click through this link, we get it helps the channel. Oh, yeah. um, you can get the entire Demon Slayer box set, right? Pre-order, I think it's coming out, I want to say October, yeah. $119 for all of it. All of it. That's you know, I'm sorry. I, I already ordered it. We yeah. already ordered it. So um, I just wanted to let you know because a lot of people like Demon Slayer. So there you go. And that's kicking Western comics ass. It's kicking like pretty much the entire Western comic market by itself. One title. <laughs> so and One that doesn't title. count everything else. And believe me, I think, I think uh, you know, Warner Brothers and, and Disney are, are paying attention. Oh, I know Disney is, because they're trying to leverage into that. But anyway. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 201,000 subs. I'm working on a game plan for a- We gotta do that. Yeah, but later this week, or this weekend, we'll okay. do something. Okay, we'll we do got something. it, we gotta do something. Yeah, for 200,000, so thanks for the support, guys. Yeah, you know, who knew? Uh, a couple of years ago, we started talking about problems in the comic book industry because we worked in the comic book industry and we noticed problems. Mm -hmm. And we saw other people on YouTube were talking about problems. And we're like, well, yes, we actually agree that these are problems and we can give you a little more insight because we worked on like maybe this other side of things. And we saw on the, at least like, I guess the mainstream publishing side of things, the Disney comic side of things, where things were. Now, you have to understand too, by us choosing to do that, which we did so knowingly, we kind of burned down all our bridges to go back to that because how dare we? Yeah, we did. And I think what we're, we're going to see now, I don't think we're going to see the comic book industry admit that it was wrong because there was a concerted effort to uh, smack down any dissent mm -hmm. on YouTube, right? Let's, let's put it that way. That's how we'll politely put it, right? Um, they're not going to admit they're wrong. What they could potentially do is just 
do a course correction and then just pretend that oh, all the it was YouTube... our plan all the time. Yeah, it was our plan was, all along. We meant to fail. Had we meant to, to do. do that. It's all good. Had nothing to do with YouTube. Had nothing to do with these these naysayers. It's okay. This bitch slaps back. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, there are definitely two different comic book industries. Uh, manga sales and comic book crowdfunding numbers are at an all-time high. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, crowdfunding's through the roof, and it's not just Kickstarter. And we're going to talk about that later, too. It's not just Kickstarter, because Indiegogo keeps getting ignored by journalists, even though a lot of these Indiegogo campaigns have done better than Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about that. By the way, this is an article on DRESD. Uh, some dumbass over there wrote this. Who's this dumbass? What's this guy's? Oh, oh Neon. So, Kenyan? Kenyan. Kenyan. Kenyan Kenan? Yeah, what a, what a bitch. This guy sounds like a bitch. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't want to assume his, his their gender. Wait, come here, give me a second. <laughs> Definitely a boy. Anyway, continue. <laughs> so. All right. So, yeah, the direct market, though. This is so weird. Like, everybody's living high on the hog. Uh, manga, we're hearing from friends that work for manga publishers. We're not going to say who, but we're hearing from them that they can't get the stuff printed fast enough. Mm -hmm. the, the booksellers are reaching, booksellers, not comic shops, booksellers are reaching out to them being like, can you give us an exclusive cover or something? We need something original and we can't keep this stuff in stock. I'm mm -hmm. seeing, I'm seeing, uh, I saw on Twitter people posting images of uh, Demon Slayer being sold out until like October, November on the shelf, like at Barnes and Noble. Like we're not getting any more Demon Again. Slayer. The entire series right here. On Amazon. Um, if you, you, you click on that link, it'll take you right to it. Anyway, continue. So you're hearing about this. We're hearing about the crowdfunding campaigns making millions of dollars or even hundreds of thousands of dollars in comic books during the pandemic because people are home. They want to read, right? You just want to read good things. Right. And and then the other side of it is, oh, my God, comic shops are closing down. Now, Grant, in a lot of cases, it wasn't their fault. They were forced to shut down right. because of the pandemic. However they were in such a weakened state that they couldn't afford to shut down even for a couple of months. Right. And and part of it was, you know, the mainstream comic market and the way they had that they held retailers, you know, by the balls, you know, for, yeah. you know, for years yeah. with their distribution methods and all that, all that other shit. And then they aren't sell, doing comics people want to buy. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can't blame the, the comic shops. No. Uh, but yeah, they basically, they play the uh, the hand they're dealt. And some of them have dipped out. I mean, we said before, I, I know that there was one retailer that I ordered a lot of stuff through the mail uh, from them. And they said, we're no longer selling new comics because frankly, we can't sell them. We're mm -hmm. only going to sell back issues. And they're doing very, very well, I guess, with back issues. People want the old stuff. They don't want Right. They, they rather have old stuff. things than the new stuff. What's that tell you? And then yep. you, you keep saying there's no issue. Uh, so Diamond, you know, they shut down. Marvel and DC both are looking at alternative distribution. Again, this goes back to what Eric Larson was saying, because they're getting pressure from the top. Like, they got to perform. Disney and Warner, both, especially Warner right now, because they're merging with Discovery. They just sold off a mobile game company today. Mm -hmm. You know, they're looking at the comic book thing like, you guys aren't selling much. Yeah, they're selling off more profitable things. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just the whole thing with the diamond thing, and I said this before, and I still say I know when I first met you, I didn't know much about comics. And when you explained to me how comics worked, I thought that was the dumbest thing I ever heard that everybody had to go through diamond. I'm like, that's stupid, because what happens something happens to diamond. Yeah. And you're like, oh no, this is the way it's always been done. And I'm like, that doesn't make it the right way. It's stupid. It is stupid. It's it's a, what do they call it? A critical point of failure. You have one you have one thread that holds up the entire industry, and when somebody cuts that thread, mm -hmm. and we saw it during the pandemic, Diamond decided to crawl under the desk in the fetal position. They left uh, you know publishers and retailers and fans high and dry. And you know what? Marvel and DC they're getting pressure from executives from multi-billion dollar companies are like, we still have to publish. So we're going to go with Penguin. We're going to go with Lunar or whatever it was, or UCS. And they, they went around Diamond. Yeah, well, I, it was always a, a stupid way to do business. It's always been. So now we have layoffs at DC Comics. I guarantee you there are going to be more layoffs uh, coming to DC because they're, they're merging with Warner. Oh, or, yeah, 100%. Or, um, Warner and Discovery, I'm sorry. Uh, Warner and Discovery are merging and we're, DC's caught in there. Yeah, they're they're caught in there. It's not important. There there have been rumors already about a third party coming in to take over production. Yes. But where we're going with this? So this is the so state. Where are we going with this? This <laughs> is the state of the direct market. I'm trying to paint this picture because okay. meanwhile, manga's blowing up, crowdfunding's blowing up, and all you see are these headlines. You know, comic shops are closing. This is coming from a pimp master Broda. Comic book stores close permanently. Nothing to see here. Comic book industry is dying. 
Uh, the wow. Guardian. It's almost as if someone's been saying that for a while now. <laughs> Why are comic shops closing as superheroes make a mint? Because the movies have little to nothing to do with the comic books. I'm just sitting here like, are you kidding me right now? Oh, yeah, Demon Slayer manga sells entire U.S. comic book industry. It's almost like people have been saying this and they keep getting called names. So here's, here's where a lot of the problems were. Because, you know, basically the comic book industry, from where we're sitting has been listening to a relatively small cabal of people that spend entirely too much time on Twitter. They've been listening to the whiny babies on Twitter who yell about everything. They literally spend their day going around looking for things to be offended by and to scream about um, and to belittle on Twitter because they didn't you know, like the same thing they did a cartoon or movie or comic or whatever. If you go out to comic book Twitter, and we've talked about comic book Twitter before, it's, it's mostly made up of comic book freelancers or would-be wannabe freelancers. Uh, journalists who spend way too much time on Twitter, they should be writing articles, and uh, fans or hangers-on of, of pros and, and journalists. And then we had we saw the decline. We saw the websites decline. We saw like Newsarama got rolled into Games Radar. We saw some sites got shut down. We see that you know, some publishers went out of business. So we're seeing the decline. And then Mark Miller comes out, who's one of the most successful people in comics, and basically says, hey, yeah, I just heard from somebody, one of the big two, that very few people who buy comics are actually on Twitter. Again, it's almost as if people have been telling you this for a while now. Yeah, he said only 10% of comic buyers even have a Twitter account, and only half of those are actually active. Thus, 95% of the comic book audience is not even on Twitter. Most people avoid Twitter like the plague because it is so out of touch and ridiculous that people don't even go to Twitter. Yeah. So imagine you're a comic book publisher and you've been listening to Twitter for the last eight or nine years. You've been listening to comic book journalists who live and die by Twitter. Disney would not buy Twitter because they said it was too toxic and that was then. That was several years ago. But they're going to let Twitter make their marketing decisions for them when it comes to comic books. That's because they hired people that were, you know, people on Twitter. Yeah. And these journos, they all hang out on Twitter and they have a nice cozy little system. So then, you know, we get a couple of uh, uh, snags, a couple of snags. They hit some snags where outside of the Twitter ecosystem, outside of the blogs that are dependent on the Twitter ecosystem. Outside of the dome. Outside of the dome, right? They, they. Oh, I'm sorry. It's pronounced dumb. I, I always do that dumb. wrong. We get YouTubers and outsiders coming in and giving their hot takes on the state of the industry. And they cry foul. They're like, oh my God, these people are horrible. They're just a bunch of Yahtzees. Don't listen to them, Marvel and DC. Oh my God, they don't know what they're talking about. And then some of these people turn around and start making hundreds of thousands of dollars in crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. uh, more money than a lot of the comic book professionals who hang out on Twitter made. So then the story, you know, it just keeps changing. They're like, well, it's just a one-off and oh, whatever. It's still amateur hour, whatever. Well, then. No, it is because, oh, they want to support. They're alt-right or blah, blah, blah. And these people want to support them because they're, they're Yahtzees. Hurry, cancel them. Yeah, it had nothing to do with buying comics. They're just a bunch of people who just, they're white supremacists who just, you know, were just giving But they're not money. even white. Doesn't matter. They Eternally. They're white inside. They're white inside. They got vanilla cream in them. That's right. Uh, it and if it's going. a woman, it's because she's actually a misogynist. She just doesn't know it yet. So, yeah, because when that started happening, right, because the narrative could be like, oh, there's just a bunch of whiny man babies on YouTube and, you know, these, these alt-right blogs or whatever. Don't listen to them. Listen to Twitter and listen. And then the company owners had to be looking at like, well, this, these guys are making like millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. What's going on here? Oh, nothing to see here. Well, then it, it doesn't stop there. Then you get Todd McFarlane, one of the biggest names in comics, U.S. comics, ever, mm -hmm. does a campaign on Kickstarter, gets millions of dollars. Then you get Boom Studios. Boom Studios does this book with Keanu Reeves, and they get millions of dollars. It's almost as if people want good stories and good characters, and they don't care about the politics. No. It's so, almost like that. So what's going on now is we're running out of excuses. Okay, well, we can't sell comics. If comics don't sell. Well, why are people back in the Kickstarter? Oh, they're just Yahtzees. Okay, well, here comes Boom with Keanu Reeves. Oh, and then here, come, here comes manga sales. Here comes manga sales. Again, coming from Pimp Master Broda. I, I was going to say, we were, at this, we were at Barnes & Noble just the other day, and yeah. I know that Pimp Master Broda is right. Yeah. 
He's absolutely right. I was looking. Very few American graphic novels. You know where the American graphic novels are going? The bargain bin. Always. Always. Where comics go to fucking die. They go to wait, Ollie's. Wait, they go to fucking die or fuck and die? <laughs> sorry, mom. Uh, not really sorry. That's a hell one. of a way I'm to sorry, go I'm sorry, but I'm not really sorry. That's a hell of a way to go out, isn't it? I know. I mean, if you're going to go. If you're going to go, you might as well have fun. One big <laughs> final bang anyway. before the end. Anyway, um, yeah, so this this is happening. You can't ignore this. Constant articles. Again, you could ignore the the bloggers, you could ignore um, the YouTubers, whatever. But when you've got mainstream media outlets talking about how phenomenally successful manga is and how successful crowdfunding is, there are no more excuses. No, you've no. basically been you've been taking like I always I always tell people, and they get pissed at me, and I don't give a shit. A lot of people get pissed at me these days, so fuck off. I tell people I never take life advice from people who are failing at something in life. You never take financial advice from someone who's filed for bankruptcy multiple times, mm -hmm. right? You don't take advice on how to run your comic book business from people that can't sell comic books. And what gets me <laughs> about the crowdfunders is a lot too. Are, these are usually things that, that they passed on. Yes. You know, or they pass on because they're like, oh, well, that's not going to sell in this market because Twitter says. And then they pass on it and it goes on to like completely kick their ass. And it's like. Good. Way to go there. Good for you. Well, Tom McFarlane. Okay, so not just, not only did he make a ton of money on the Spawn Kickstarter, but his Spawn 300 outsold J.J. Abrams Spider-Man number one. Because that was stupid. That was that just J.J. Abrams and his kid trying to get more attention for J.J. Abrams and his kid. Uh, Berserker went on to sell 600,000 copies because they didn't listen to Twitter. And this is the thing that really pissed me off about Berserker, regardless of the quality of the book. So people say the book's not that great, whatever. It's, it's sold because it was Keanu Reeves. What pisses me off about Berserker is that Twitter tried to cancel Berserker. They tried... Everything. They tried to shame Boom Studios yes. on Twitter. They went to the media outlets. We have videos outlets. on it, guys. Go look it up. Yeah. They went to the media outlets and tried to tell Boom Studios that they were they were horrible people, that they were literally stealing money from, like, LGBTQ creators and all this other nonsense. Because, you know, don't you know, if they weren't going to spend it on Keanu Reeves, they were going to give it to them even though they had no idea they existed. Right, right. And that's not how this works. But they tried this before with Archie Comics 2015. Uh, they, I remember that. Yeah, yes. they actually tried to, it, again, it was a, a cabal of Twitter people and journalists, and they're usually one in the same, you know, telling Archie Comics that they weren't allowed to do a Kickstarter because how dare they? And they listened. So for years, the comic book industry has been listening to very, very bad advice on business from people who are, a lot of them, openly anti-capitalist anyway. Mm -hmm. So why would you take business advice from from somebody who doesn't doesn't like the way that business works, and it's been to their detriment? And now, oh manga, shocker! <laughs> yeah, now manga has come in and crowdfunding has come in, and they've eaten your damn lunch. So fast, it like Jughead, just like yeah, they're eating it, just like Jughead. So now the rumor again; these are rumors. We can't verify any of these rumors, but the rumor is that some of these media outlets are losing access now. They're not getting review copies of comics anymore. They're not being, uh, they're not getting badges at conventions. Again, these are rumors, but we're seeing some people get gone from positions at different comic book companies. And some of these people have been accused in the past of being part of like a gatekeeping cabal of, of you know, editors and creators and stuff like that. And they're just suddenly getting gone. Mm -hmm. So it's, possible, I mean, I'm not, we're not saying that's 100%, but it's possible that comic book publishers, business people now are like, oh, shit, you know, we are out, this is it, this is the end. We've we're been out of saying excuses. for a long time, like, how long is it going to take these comic companies to realize that they have to make money and they're going to have to, like, put a, a stop to it because they're going to, they're just going to bleed out if they don't, you know, put some stitches in that thing and put a mandate on it. And and it, it's taken longer than I thought it was going to, if I'm going to be honest with you, that they're finally fighting back and they're finally questioning some of these people who keep telling them, you know, like the worm tongues whispering in their ears saying, mm -hmm. like, you, you know, if people shame if you let that person work on this yeah. because they're, just the, uh, and, you know, this or that or the other, you need to hire this, you know, this type of person over here who has no experience whatsoever, but who's my friend, you know? 
And that's been what's going on. And you know, I'm not surprised that they're starting to pull the plug on these people. They have to if they're going to stay in business. Yeah. I think the only reason, if if this is actually what's going on, if the the, the rumor of all the, the Whisper Network stuff and the purge and all this is actually going on, it's because this is the absolute last Hail Mary pass they're getting. Because I think they are, you know, you, you pair it up with what Eric Larson was saying and what some other people are saying. And it sounds like what and people like us have been saying since before they yeah, said right, it, right? And we got you know blacklisted for saying it years, years. And it's, it's definitely not so us. much shit we've taken. A lot of people, God, you, yeah, you'd be surprised the shit that we don't talk about that we've gotten. Like we knew as soon as we started talking about this stuff that our our whatever foothold we had in comics, it was over. But we knew what was going on was wrong. We had to say something. Yeah, and uh, there's no going back. It's a it's a sinking ship. And you know, I think it might even be too late. I think least. it's too late. I mean, they're going to sell I them off, and they're. Gonna, I, I think it's too late. They had. They needed to patch these holes a while back, and they didn't do it. Yeah, you can't wait until the the boat is sinking to think about patching the holes or think about putting a life raft on the the boat. Mm -mm. You know, <laughs> and that's what they're doing. But it's going to be interesting to watch this again. You know, manga has completely dominated graphic novel sales here in the U.S. too. People are making six figures. I was gonna say, crowdfunders are kicking their ass. Crowdfunders are kicking their ass. And it's not just Kickstarter, that pisses me off too. Uh, these journos that hang out on Twitter will not acknowledge Indiegogo. They will not Because they don't, they don't control it. They don't control it. No, I don't think they control Kickstarter anymore either. I mean, more so than Indiegogo, but there are people out there making over a million dollars on Indiegogo and you will never hear the mainstream comic book journalists talk about it because it's verboten. But so to me, that does not, that's not journalism. Because no. at that point, you're just, you're, just, you're, you're just spreading a narrative that goes along with what you think. Where a real journalism would be like, you're trying to find out the facts and you're trying to report the facts. And that's what we ran into trouble because how very dare we speak out um, on facts and not on uh, feelings. And, and that got us, you know, in so much trouble. But here we are, th three years later. Yeah. And and now they're all saying what we've been saying. Because one of the first things we talked about was this kind of stuff. Yep. So there it is, guys. Uh, it's it's not going to get any better. I, I think the only, the only thing that these publishers can do is try to do damage control until the inevitable end, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So we're going to wrap this up. Mm -hmm. All right. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll talk later. Bye.